Jake Roos, I am worn out. I'm wore out from doing these videos. I am tired. I need I need some time. I mean, listen, Rusty's Rusty's been getting all the rest while all these commitments are going on, and uh, I know everybody wants to keep him on vacation, um, but I need him to come back so I can go on one. I'm tired of hosting these videos and doing these commitments, but no, I'm I'm actually not. It's great for business. It's great for you all, and we love you all. Marquise Easley has committed to Georgia. Um, six foot five, 345 pound offensive tackle. Absolutely. If I'm watching him and watching film, I love everything about him as an offensive tackle. Um, I don't know. Maybe he goes to Georgia and he's a complete bust. I doubt it. Uh, but what's this now, Roos? Five and eight days? Five and eight days. What a, what I, don't know. I don't remember what my family looks like anymore. <laughs> um, because uh, <laughs> we've just been doing this over and over again. Um, but yeah, no, just listen. Uh, another guy here, we, we talked about this uh, yesterday with our, the Nair Daniels thing, and, and we talked about this with Joseph Jonah Johnny. Uh, a long-term thing here for Georgia, a long-term recruitment. Uh, they've been involved with this guy for a while, and it felt like to some degree it was a lot like the Joseph Jonah Johnny uh, recruitment in that Georgia was a main player just sort of out of the gate for Marquise Easley. He's a guy that um, you know, really responded well to that offer. And, you, I mean, you always wonder how a guy's going to take to it when he's a Midwest guy. I mean, that can go in any number of ways. Oklahoma wanted this guy bad and, uh, you know, did a fantastic job recruiting him and certainly won't give up now. But, uh, you know, how was Georgia going to be a factor in this? Uh, makes a couple of visits to Athens. And as we've heard a couple of times, man, I've mentioned this on a couple of these videos that we've done. He comes for that official visit, and the word immediately switches. And I start hearing from Oklahoma guys, hey, this kid's taking visits for fun at this point. You know, that's the feeling that they're getting on this end. That's what's so impressive to me about this run for Georgia. It set the stage for a lot of these guys. Those official visits last month uh, set the stage for a lot of these guys. And, uh, you know, again, man, I, I mentioned this when we were talking about Nair, but credit to Stacey Searles once again. Six guys in this class now. I would not have guessed that coming into it. We thought this was not going to be a strong year for the O-line. And instead, uh, Georgia comes out with what I think looks like maybe the most impressive group in the country. And I, I think we'll be able to challenge for the top-ranked OL class in 24, uh, certainly. Um, but easily, man, uh, a guy who, uh, you know, maybe not on, the mo on most radars uh, initially just because Look, uh, you know, can't 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 baby. Can't uh, yeah. Don't don't say that like you're from there. <laughs> no, but I, I I have heard the name before. But I had heard the name before, and that's why when I saw it, I was like, oh, that's how that's spelled. Yeah, yeah. It's very. It was very interesting to to see them kind of reach up there, man. And you know, this goes in, I think, to to Georgia's kind of nationwide reach right now. Uh, they're doing a fantastic job of going coast to coast, uh, Midwest. I mean, they're picking off the nation's best in any number of spots that they want to right now. And um, just what an incredible run, man. I, I think that uh, I'm having a hard time remembering a better one for Georgia. Uh, if you can, please correct me. Uh, I can't remember one. I mean, I can remember big nights, you know, a couple sure. of dog nights here where they got three or four commitments. And before you say, well, if those didn't pan out, we don't know if all these guys are going to pan out either. So calm down. Um, I, I'm trying right now not to get zoned out by this huddle highlight because I really do I like watching this kid play. I remember when, when Georgia first offered him because it was right around that time that we were starting to have that conversation. Hey, what's Georgia going to do on O-line in this class? Yeah. Like, I mean, you know, uh, I remember Michael Looney was on the radar at the time, and, and you know, the, I don't think his recruitment hadn't unfolded enough that we knew a, uh, a favorite. Well, Georgia ended up getting him. Well, I don't think we knew where Georgia was with Nair Daniels. Marcus Harrison wasn't even a big deal quite yet. Um, it was because it was before the uh, scavenger hunt, and that's kind of when we, he really became an on-the-radar guy. Easily was back in, like, February, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, it, he was pretty early on in this yeah. class. He and Nair Daniels were kind of uh, at the beginning of the year, best that I can recall. And, um, yeah, you know, you didn't know. I mean, I, Michael Looney, for all intents and purposes, it felt like came into the summer as a guy who was probably headed elsewhere. Yeah. Uh, up in Georgia. Easily, I don't think he felt that way as much about, um, you know, like I said, Oklahoma kind of uh, were uh, wringing their hands after that Georgia official visit. Tennessee felt like they could still stay in this thing as well. Um, but, you know, it was one of those things. Georgia kind of jumped in early 
uh, found their guy, made the connection, and uh, reels in uh, what is a tremendous player. Another four-star for this class, 242 overall in the industry ranking. That's pretty consistent if you look across the uh, if you look across all the services, uh, what kind of where he sits, where guys think that he sits in this class. Um, but like you said, I, I think the upside is huge for a guy like this. And you just can't get enough of these big bodies, man. I mean, they're just yeah. dudes like this are not standing on every street corner, uh, at, you know, especially in the 2024 cycle, I think is what's important to keep in mind here. But taking you back to that offer, when I saw this kid's film and we were having that conversation, um, I was – like I look, I watched him. And I was like, "This is a guy, George. I think really needs to get because I really liked his film." And and listen, I'm watching him. I'm not watching the competition. And there's no doubt in my mind that when you look at when you look at the four offensive linemen Georgia has landed since June the 30th, Michael Uni uh, Uni uh, plays tremendous competition in Texas. Um, you know, plays in a really good league in Texas. Uh, you know, Nair Daniels. We discussed it whenever we did the video on him. Um, you know, Bergen Catholic, they, they play national. They, they do some other things. They play some of the best ball uh, that there is in New Jersey. So that's another one. Daniel Calhoun obviously plays in the state of Georgia, uh, played three years at Centennial. Now he's going to be at Walton. Um, you know, he's going to play tremendous competition. I think he is – I think Marquis Easley's docked a little bit on that competition. Not that Illinois is just chopped liver or anything, but it's not the depth and, and week in and week out and going against, you know, top shelf offensive linemen um, consistency consistently. Um, so I think that's one reason he gets docked. But when you just look at the raw tools, the twitch, how light he is on his feet, um, I really like him. And I think he's a very, very good football player and a guy that that, that can play at Georgia. And again, another guy, 345 pounds. Um, you know, he doesn't have as far to go as Daniel Calhoun or Nair Daniels, but he's going to come into Georgia and they're probably going to ask him to lose, you know, 20 pounds. And, uh, and he'll be even lighter on his feet. He's going to move even better. Uh, I don't know where the heck California Power Athletics comes from a kid from from Come On Feel the Illinois, uh, but uh, that's uh, Bowlby played for that team too. That's this is that the California Power don't don't just uh, use California kids. I can assure you. What's he? Uh, what's he playing? What is it? Seven on seven team? What's he doing? I, I don't, seven know. On seven? I mean, I, I don't You don't see a lot of offensive linemen playing seven on seven. Slot but, uh, receiver. <laughs> no, this is listen. I I think that. All credit due to Georgia. You go ahead. You come like I said. I, I mentioned this in the the Nair Daniels piece. You came into June not knowing what Georgia was going to do on offensive line. Uh, really, uh, you had two pieces in place in Marcus Harrison and Malachi Tolliver. People weren't just falling all over themselves because those were three star guys. Even though we think those are pretty good players as well. Uh, but you come out uh, in before the second full week of July with your, your O-line class done. Uh, yeah. So in the course of about five weeks, six weeks, if you, you go back to the Harrison commitment, in the course of about six weeks, roughly six, seven weeks, you have built the entire class with six guys. Um, just a tremendous effort all around. Um, Stacy Searles deserves all the credit in the world. I encourage people to go over, check out the piece that I did uh, over at Dogs HQ, where I, I basically just gave the man its flowers. I said, you know, a lot of people were wringing their hands. I was underwhelmed with the hire. I admitted that. I wrote that on the board. Um, Stacey Searles has addressed a lot of concerns in the initial uh, two classes here. And if he's able to keep this one together, it's a, a really fantastic effort in what was supposed to be a year that Georgia and everybody else would struggle on the offensive front. And one can only hope that Stacey Searles has a glass bottle somewhere with a cork in it, and it has a beverage that came out of a barrel on the inside and uh, he can pour it over some ice or not, depending on how, how much of a man he is and how much hair he's got on his chest and, uh, and really enjoy himself. Because uh, like you said, this coffee of line class is complete. Doesn't mean the work stops. You know, he's going to continue to work on David Sanders and the other big time prospects in the 2025 and they, class. And they're going to fight for each of these kids. Too, and they're going to, and that's exactly what I was going to say. They're yeah. going to have to kind of, uh, you know, there may be a, there may be a half of them, let's say, uh, cause it's six, it's, you know, maybe three or four of them that, um, that they don't really have to worry about. They completely shut it down. Um, but you know, this is one, I think that, that Oklahoma is probably going to recruit until the very end. I think Wisconsin's probably going to try to stay in Marcus Harrison's ear until the end. Um, you know, maybe Michael, Michael, uh, uh, Uni and and uh, Nair Daniels and 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 that lot can kind of uh, you know kind of keep it quiet for Georgia, uh, but ultimately um, six offensive linemen in this class. When I swear, 
maybe six to 10 weeks ago, we were wondering where they were all going to come from. Um, so massive job by Georgia there, massive job on the offensive line, massive job in, in terms of the lines of scrimmage just in, in the past eight days. And uh, more commitments may be coming later on this month. Um, you know, we don't we still don't know a commitment date as of right now. I don't think on Justin Williams, a five star linebacker uh, where, where, you know, K.J. Bolden's going to go on August the 5th, you know, like where Georgia stands there. Uh, you know, so, That's yeah, there's a long yeah, way to go, though. Yeah, man, there's a long way to go for everything in this class. Yeah. And uh, um, but you know, we'll have you covered over at Dogs HQ. And uh, what a run it's been, Roos. Let's take a day or two, <laughs> buddy. I, I'm gonna go see if Stacy Searles will give me a little swig out of that bottle. Yeah, little, little, yeah, maybe it's the good stuff. Maybe it's Pappy. Maybe you got it from Stetson. <laughs> see you guys later on. <laughs>